I'm gonna show you a list of 30 words that I personally like to go through my novel and delete or replace as much as possible to make my writing stronger. And I'm actually going to show you in my Word document at the end of this video, after I go through the list of all the words, I'm going to show you how I find all of these words in my own document and just how many there are. And I'm a little nervous about it. <laughs> All right, we are about to cut some words. I am editing my novel today for a bunch of filler words that can be taken out to make the novel stronger. I am nervous about it. I've got a list of 30 filler words that you can cut to make your story stronger and say the same thing with less. I actually have more than 30. I have like 34 or 35 because there are a few that are just my issue. <laughs> like my characters nod a lot and so I'm going to be word searching nod and trying to replace that sometimes with things that are a little bit more interesting so they're not all bobbleheads just nodding everywhere. And I'm going to show you a fun trick to do this much faster than what I used to do where I used to like go one at a time and find and replace. So when we say words to delete or words to cut in your novel, it's a little bit tricky because sometimes you'll be rewriting it and replacing it with better words and other times you're going to be deleting it completely because sometimes you can say more with less and readers like to speed along the page and keep going with the story. They don't like to be caught up in a bunch of fluff words. Just a quick word of encouragement. If you use these words, you are not a bad writer. This is pretty much we all use these words. That's why they are generic words to cut because they're very easy to use and very common. And just FYI, this is going to be the first video in a series of three editing videos. We're going to talk about words to cut today and then we're going to talk about overwriting next where you write too much of your story and you don't need all of it and you cut bigger chunks, maybe paragraphs or even chapters. And then underwriting where you don't write enough of your story and you have to fill it in later. The most common question that I get, honestly, is people write to me and say, how can I stop doing that? How can I never do that again? How can I fix myself? Nobody says, how can I fix myself? myself, but you know what I mean. And yeah, we can get better, but I mean, the whole purpose of editing is acknowledging that we weren't perfect the first time and that's okay. That's why we edit is to make it better later. So don't stress so much about being perfect and never doing these things because we all do them. These 30 words are very commonly overused by all writers. You're not alone. So for those of you who are wondering, like, when do I start cutting words? Do I do that you know, right after the first draft. Well, I personally would recommend doing this stage right before you're gonna send to your editor because it is so like specific and so detailed of an edit. And sometimes if you do a detailed edit like this, like right after your first draft, you're gonna end up like rewriting the entire scene or maybe scrapping it all together and deleting it. And so all this work would be wasted if you do this kind of level edits that early on, it's just too soon. All right, if I haven't convinced you guys yet, then you'll never be convinced. Let's get into the words. All right, at the top I wrote filter words. I don't know if all of these are filter words. Uh, don't judge me. <laughs> but the sensory words where you say the five senses, those definitely are filter words because you don't actually need them. And it's very common and natural to use them because that's how we talk in real life. Like I felt this way, I saw this, I heard that. Um, but the reason that they're considered filter words is because it puts a distance between what the characters are feeling and the reader. I talked about this a little in my show versus tell video, which I will link below if you're curious, but the idea is that instead of saying, I heard this happen, you just say this happened, instead of being, you know, told that the character saw something or heard something. It's just like you just hear it with them and you feel it with them and you experience it with them. And so I hope it goes without saying that there are exceptions to the rule. Like you're not gonna go and find all instances of this word and delete them all because sometimes you need them, especially in dialogue, because this is how we speak. But what I wanna do is challenge you guys to basically challenge every word and ask, does it really need to be there? Can I say the same thing with less? So we're gonna scroll through these really quick. Felt and feel, wonder, thought, know, realize, looking and looked, all of these are those sensory words that I told you about where you're putting uh, your narrator filter over the character and you could just let it happen. Um, adverbs or words that end in L-Y. Um, I personally love adverbs. I am not totally against them, but I can see how sometimes it clutters up the story. And so you can challenge yourself and ask, is there a shorter way to say this? Instead of like, uh, this person is enchantingly beautiful. You could just say they're enchanting, they're beautiful. And 
you'll notice that, you know, it feels good as the writer to say all the extra words, but as a reader, it's more powerful. It has more punch sometimes when there's less. I'm sure there's a lot more we could say about adverbs, but this is not a video about adverbs. You know what? I, I organized this list poorly. This was originally just my list for me to check, but words like now and then and possibly other transitionary words are not bad words by themselves, but they can be overused very easily. So you might find where you begin each new paragraph with now this happened, then this happened, then that happened, now that happened. And you want to avoid that kind of storytelling where you're just kind of repeating the word and leading them through. You want to find more creative ways to transition, if that makes sense. Actually, you know what? This is organized really well because but and and are both transitionary words as well. And I didn't think of them this way at first, but actually I use these even more frequently, unfortunately. When I first started out writing, I used to have one of these words in almost every single paragraph. And that's horrible because as a reader, it can be very repetitive. I'm Again, it's not a bad word, but it takes away its power. You know what I mean? Like if you have the word but, it can be a very powerful like cliffhanger type feel. Plot twist, but this happened. Uh, but if you use it every couple paragraphs or every paragraph, like I have been known to in my first drafts, then it takes away its power and it's no longer having that strong powerful effect. These are the words that if you search them, you're not going to get rid of all of them, okay? You're just going to challenge every instance where you use it and ask yourself, does it really need to be here? Could it be stronger without it? Could I rewrite it better? This next one I kind of lumped together was or had or were or any form of that where it's past tense uh, and passive. Obviously, if you're writing in the past tense, you're going to use these. So this is again another instance of do not delete all of them. Your sentences will not make sense. What's a good example of this? Okay, how about this one? Okay, let's try this example. You could say in a passive way, you could say Penny was sleeping in the chair. Um, but to remove the passive, removing the was, you would say something like Penny slept in the chair. That's a lame example, but you get the idea. Notice or noticing is another filter word for sure, where you could just say something happened, sounded, hear or heard, saw, seen or see, start to, began to, begin to, continue to. Show is trickier because it can be used in many ways, but often it will fall into the same category as like wonder or realize, where it's again a filter word through like a narrator perspective. Finally, suddenly and as are more of those transition words that are again overused. <laughs> very. Very is I think considered an adverb. Okay, I had to look it up. Here is the definition. I don't know if you guys can read that. All right, so According to this, it seems like the issue is especially when it's used to qualify another adverb. So instead of like very quickly, just say quickly. Or, you know, if you really need to clarify and make something stronger, find a stronger verb. Uh, moment. <laughs> um, I, I have this on the list. I don't know if this is just me, but a lot of things happen in a moment, especially in fantasy when you can't be like a minute or exactly 30 seconds on the clock. You know what I mean? This is probably an instance where you just need to watch that you're not overusing a word. It's not a bad word word, just don't overuse it. <clears throat> the word that. Now again, do not word search and delete all instances because this is a very vital word in a lot of sentences, but in a lot of other sentences, you'll find that it's actually not. You can delete it without any issues and the sentence will almost read smoother and faster and more interesting. So this is one of those words just like but and and where it's a very vital word. You don't want to delete it everywhere, but if you challenge every instance of it, you will find a lot of cases where you can delete it. Oh, the word just. Uh, now, again, I don't know if this is just me. I use the word just a lot. It's a qualifier, um, a lot like the finally and suddenly and oh my gosh, is suddenly on this list? Okay, good, it is. Suddenly is one of the words that you definitely want to delete pretty much in every instance because it's so cliche at this point in writing. Um, everything that happens suddenly, it's like yeah, I kind of figured it was sudden, like they suddenly fell down. Well, yeah, when you fall down, it's usually unexpected. Only, though, and even, or even as, are more qualifiers. And I personally, I write with a lot of qualifiers, you guys. If you don't have this problem, kudos to you, but I definitely, definitely put qualifiers in like all 
paragraphs everywhere. They're everywhere. We're almost done. We have myself. Again, this might just be me, but it's definitely a filter word if you use it like I thought to myself or in <laughs> scrolling down one more, I told myself because told is also a filter word. Um, both of these things can very often be removed. And now I'm going to show you the four words that I personally also struggle with. You might have your own specific words that you find that you overuse and you need to make a little list for yourself to always watch for words like these. But for instance, at the beginning of this video, I told you guys that all my characters are constantly nodding. There are other actions in the world, Bethany. There are other things you could say. And so I'm gonna word search nod in a minute here in my own document and just show you how frequently this happens. The next word that I overuse a lot is towards and depends on where you're from if this is considered correct. I'll show you guys, I don't know if you can read that. So technically toward and towards are both correct spelling, but in the United States and in Canada, it is supposed to be toward without the S. But anyway, if we're following the rules, I want to make sure that I don't use the word towards and that I get rid of the S, but I also know that just this word in general, I overuse. If you overuse something, it loses its power. And so it's good to kind of catch yourself and challenge yourself. Like, do I need this much of that word? Ever is another one that I overuse. And so is pulling or pulled or maybe just pull even. Everybody's pulling things, you guys. And sometimes they could push it. I don't know. <sighs> wow. That was a long list. Now's the fun part. You get to see me try to figure out this highlighting thing. And I have to give a shout out to Alexa Dunn for reminding me that this is possible because I learned about it a couple years ago and completely forgot. But if you want to save yourself a ton of time, instead of word searching one word at a time, you know, clicking it, finding it, clicking it again, finding it, you can highlight all instances of a word. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. All right, I'm showing you guys my first page of The Cursed Hunter and I left some issues in there on purpose uh, because they're going to be great illustrators, but I'm first gonna show you, actually, we're gonna learn this together because it's been a while since I've done it. I totally know what I'm doing. So under, not file, but under edit, there's the find option. And so you can also do this in the top right corner. I don't know if you guys can see this very well. It's probably really tiny, but you can search the document there or you can go to edit and then over to the find option. And then you go to advanced find and replace to be able to find all instances of a word all at once. All right, so I have the word now. And what I would normally do is click over to replace and maybe type in something there, especially if I'm going to change a character's name, which I'm going to later today. <laughs> um, then I would take, you know, the original name and then I'd go in and replace it right here. But in this case, we're actually going to open up the bottom section and we're going to go and click highlight. That's how easy it is, you guys. I think we're gonna find out if all my words disappear, we'll know that it's not right. Normally when I use this feature, I use this find next option, but today we're clicking replace all. I'm so nervous. 218, 218 replacements. Okay, well, first thing I notice is that it's not always just the word now, so I guess that's encouraging. All right, so there's a few ways that I could go about doing this edit. I could do one word at a time, go through the whole document, then do the next word, go through the whole document, or I could highlight all the words <laughs> and then go through the whole document looking at just the highlighted words, or a third option would be I could highlight all the words and then read through the whole story. So I kind of get the context. Now I am on a deadline. Today is April, what is today? Today is April 7th and my deadline is April 10th. So I don't really have time. I'm not stressed. <laughs> all right, here's what I think I'm gonna do. All right, I have all 34 words here in my bullet journal. I think what I'm gonna do is take the words that have a few hundred instances or less and highlight all of them in the document. And I'll bring you guys with me in a second, but I'm not gonna do the words like but and and just yet, because that's gonna be like every word. But I'm not gonna do the words like but and 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 that. What else? I'm not gonna do the adverbs. I'm not gonna word search ly. I'm not gonna word search was, had, or were. Yeah, I feel like those five words are going to need to be done separately because they're gonna highlight so many. I'm kind of curious, I might show you guys. Um, but let's go one at a time. 
All right, I've only gone through this much of my list and I think that I need to stop. And my plan is to go through and read the highlighted parts and see if each word needs to be there. And I'll show you a little bit of that, but I'm gonna do it in chunks because this is starting to feel overwhelming. <laughs> and so you can obviously do this however you want. You could do the whole list or you could do one word at a time. I'm just stopping where I feel like it and then I'm gonna show you. Quick warning from editing me, always use this technique with care and check your work. Because you can always undo something if you catch it, but if you make a mistake like I did and you don't catch it, then it can be very, very difficult to add everything back, especially if you haven't saved a document recently. Uh, so what I did is I got too comfortable and I had been highlighting things, no problem, going through my list of all the words. And when I got to the words, the end of the list and I was on ever, I must have done something different, like clicked into that second box and maybe like, hit the space bar or something, I don't know. But instead of highlighting every instance of the word, it deleted all of them, all of them. And because I was on a roll for this video and I wasn't checking my work, I, I could have just hit the undo button and fixed it, but I didn't catch it. I went on through the rest of the list, saved it, came back to it later that night to find that every single instance of the word ever was missing. And I'm talking not just the word ever by itself, but every, everyone, everything, everywhere, reverence, severance, etc. So yeah, bonus tip, always check your work. And another bonus tip, always back up your work because I was very fortunate that I could pull up a recent version of it and I could just go back and forth from the old document to the new and add in every instance of ever again. But it was a huge waste of time and very annoying. So I wanted to warn you guys and now back to the video. All right, I'll show you just the first couple pages. Let's look at this page because there's a lot going on here. Um, some of my hair had come loose from the braid and now stuck to my skin does need to be there. The climb was nowhere near the end. Well, that's not actually the word now. So what I'm going to do is actually go and remove the highlight. The climb was nowhere near the end, even though my arms and legs shook with exhaustion. I like that even there, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it. I shed my coat at the base of the cliffs before even beginning my climb. Not needed. Delete. <laughs> um, let's scroll down to the next one. Not many dragons, oops, usually they swerved just out of reach unless they'd gotten a taste of livestock or possibly even human flesh. So let me just try it. Possibly human flesh. I think I'm gonna do control Z and I'm gonna go ahead and on the highlight that I think I need it there in this particular instance or I want it there, maybe it's more accurate. The last one on the page is, and there were those on the market for dragon meat even if our own citizens found it disgusting. If I delete that, it doesn't make sense, so it is needed in this sentence, so I'll go ahead and unhighlight. And that is how I'm gonna go through the document. I'm just gonna let my eye catch on all the bright yellow highlights and focus on one word at a time. And when I get to the end of the document, I will go back to this list and I will continue the process. <laughs> I hope that this process made sense to you guys. I do think that as you go through this process and you pay attention to the words, your brain will automatically start seeing them the next time you write them and it will start paying more attention in the future when you write them. So this is also, it's a helpful learning tool to help you write better in the future as well. Just naturally, you'll start to avoid those words or question them at least and say, do they need to be here as you're writing them? So what do you think? Do you like this kind of edit? Let me know in the comments what you think of these words to delete, if there are any of them that you find yourself needing to delete or if there are any that I missed. And I'm super excited to talk about editing in the next couple videos with you guys. We're gonna talk about overwriting and underwriting and I'm gonna put all three of these editing videos in an editing playlist for you guys in case you're editing right now during Camp Nano and you need some editing ideas or if you are going to be editing in the future after you finish your draft. <sighs> I'm gonna go eat lunch and then edit that next video. I really do hope you like this video. Thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate you. I appreciate all the thumbs up and that you subscribe and that you're here with me hanging out and leave comments so that I know if you like videos. So I really appreciate that. So I hope you keep writing and I hope you have an amazing day and I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye.